it's all, it's like, you know them cake, what is, what is that? Well, let me ask the cake lady. So, you know, the, when they, when you doing all the pretty stuff on top of the cake, what is that stuff called? Fund it. Yeah, social media, all that, that's funded. it. <laughs> it's funded. And you can't really eat funded. it. It's, it's edible, but you can't really eat it. That's social media. Social media is funded. It's covering up what's inside. And it funded looks beautiful. It looks, you know, the cake just look like bready cake. But you put that fondant on it, you can make it look like whatever you want it to look. Boy, I just preached the whole message from the baker's standpoint. But that's true. That's what it is. Y'all can't believe in it. Y'all stop. Look, ooh, look at somebody say stop believing everything. Y'all stop. People send me stuff with confidence. Look what they're doing, Pastor. How do you know? Watch this, Pastor. I've already seen that. I really, you know, this ain't the, I'm not, I mean, there's other people that know, but I really know what's going on. Like, I really do know. I know. Now, I don't know all of the personal stuff, but I know what is going on as far as the timeline of this world. I know what the devil's doing. I know what the devil's doing because I know what my God is doing. If I know what my God is doing, I know what the devil's trying to mimic and mock. I know what he's trying to be like, and I know what he's trying to duplicate. I know what he's trying to do. Amen. And, yep, that's my job to tell y'all that and to help y'all understand. You cannot keep watching your phone and believe what you see. Y'all are watching the greatest motion picture ever created. Cecil B. DeMille's would be amazed at the... The, the, the platform, the stage of life, the stage of this world, the drama that they are putting on, the show, and got everybody believing it. Got whites and blacks fighting each other because they said there's a difference. Yeah. So stop believing everything you see. Get your Bible, read your Bible, believe that. Believe what God said. Get out of Hollywood. Amen. Look at somebody say, you belong to God. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash you belong to God.pdf. It should be there this time. In these times, the devil's main desire is to shake our beliefs. So what you're watching daily, all of it is meant. To make you doubt reality. That's it. There is a plan in effect right now for Satan to take over rule of this planet. So anything they're showing you on social media, all oh, that's a distraction. All of it is funded. To cover up what is really going on. The devil is making his chess moves. Yeah. Strategically. The big. The bishop he moved. Was the pandemic. That was the devil's move. To see which churches. Really believe what they preached chess move and for a lot of people checkmate still at home wearing mask watching streams now it's convenient to stream we don't stream here hey amen you gotta come and hug us if you wanna see it live hey amen we gotta put our arms around you and breathe on you if you wanna see it live hey amen hey amen Take your mask off. Let us see your face. Don't come in here like Hamburglar. We want to see your face. But that's the devil making chess moves. In November, he's going to make one. Boom. And all these church folk. 
that are preaching politics in the pulpit. I'm like, man, all these folks that sway in their congregation to vote this way and vote that way. Checkmate. We'll see how that works out for you. Amen. Because it's not the laws that are being instated. That's not what is going on. Everything that's happening is going on to cause a war. A war on American soil. America has to be weakened to the point where other countries will march on it. So the devil's main desire is to shake our belief in who God is and our belief in who we are. You were violated, hurt, devastated, abandoned, neglected, molested. All of that stuff happened to you. So that later on in life, the devil could point to it and make you doubt who God is and who you are. If God is God, why would he let that happen to me? And if that happened to me, what kind of person am I? Yeah, that's it. Hebrews 3 and 12. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to do what? Take care. Take caution. Be cautious that there is not an evil, unbelieving heart in you. Somebody like, I'm not evil. Yeah, but when you get angry. Does your heart start speaking the wrong things? Do you lose the solidarity of your belief, the foundation of your belief? Is the devil able to shake your foundation? We are all born in sin and shaped in iniquity, according to David, because of what occurred in the garden of Eden. So because of the sin that man committed, we're all born in the sin. Right? I explained that very well in the last hip hop video. Uh, 14. Uh, entity complex. Man, my brain is up. Hmm. Amen. Uh, entity complex. I explained that. Um, how we are born in sin. How sin follows the the, the man, the man carries the sin from Adam in his blood through the begatting and all of that. So we're all born into that and shaped in iniquity. Psalms 51 and 5 says it like this. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Now that don't mean that the mother committed sin and had you. That just means that the sin curse was spread while you were conceived because of one man's sin. Adam's sin. All right? Y'all understand that? Amen. Sometimes we start believing crazy stuff, you know, and that's why God sends you, gives you preachers. The need for a preacher, the need for a pastor. You could read the Bible. You could be okay. You, you could go get on the island and just study the Bible. I'm just going to study the Bible. I don't need nobody. But, man, you would be crazy. You would have stuff all wrong. Yeah, because you need a preacher. Oh, folks ain't clapping. You need the church, you need a pastor, you need the balance, you need accountability. Amen. You can't just talk to God and never be accountable to anyone. Amen. I don't think there's a Bible character in the Bible outside of Jesus that God liked more than Moses. Moses was his guy. The Bible said uh, God came down by the tent of meeting and talked to Moses face to face. Had a relationship. God wanted to just talk to a man. And him and Moses, Moses reasoning with him. And well, God, if you do this, it'll look like this. And God's like, really? Okay. I'm serious. That, that really happened. That was his relationship with Moses. But what people fail to realize is that when God first appeared to him, he shocked Moses because 
man hadn't seen God like that. So, I mean, he's in a burning bush. He said, take your sandals off. The feet, I mean, the ground is holy ground. He has this holy ground experience. He says, you got to go. You got to let my, let my people go. You got to tell Pharaoh all that. He said, well, I can't even talk. Well, you got to go get uh, your brother. Let him talk. He can talk. I'm going to talk to you. He said, and then you're going to be me to him. He said, you're going to be a God to him. See, folks got a problem with the way God talked. That's what God said. I'm choosing a man to be God for him. Yeah, and set my people free. Then what did Moses do? Moses didn't just pack his stuff up and go. Moses went home and talked to his father-in-law, who was his authority. Gave him a place to stay. Gave him a job. Gave him a woman. God didn't give him the place to stay. God didn't give him the woman. God didn't give him the job. Jethro did. Look at somebody. Well, see, the, shut up. Jethro did that. A man did that. So Moses, after talking to God through a burning bush, talking to God's presence, intimately, he went to Jethro and said, Jethro, I got some business I need to take care of back in Egypt. Can I go? Jethro said, you may go. He packed his stuff and left. And that was it. Now, this is, the, this is why God picked Moses. Because Moses didn't bring God up at all. Now, now, now think about that. Think about that. If that had been us, me and Dr. Carter was talking about this the other day. <laughs> I said, if that had been you, what would you have seen? He said, I would have went to Jethro and said, look here, Jethro. I just talked to God. Oh, ba 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 And after I, I done talked to God, so I don't really have to tell you anything. I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> but we were joking about that's, that's how we would do it. If you saw God, you ain't got to talk to a person again, ever. Man, I'm going back to the bush. I answer to a bush and a bush alone. I don't have to answer to no human. Bushes are talking to me. Bushes catching on fire when I walk around. Ground getting holy when I'm around. The ground just gets holy. Folk got to take shoes off when they come around me. I don't have to talk to nothing. See? But that's not what he did. He went and submitted to his earthly authority. With all of what God had told him. He still went and submitted himself. And that's why God liked him. God don't like folks that think they don't have to submit to anybody. Amen. Submit to authorities. You sitting in here. Oh, well, you know, they don't ever ask me to preach, but I got a word from the Lord. Why we got to ask you to preach if you got a word? Go preach. Well, I just want to take some of your engagement since people know you. Or if you don't get to. But what is that, man? Why you got to do everything creepingly and sneakily? Man up and talk to the authority. Moses went straight to Jethro. Before millions of people could be set free, he had to submit to an earthly authority. Amen. Amen. I don't know why I went that way, but hey, praise the Lord. Somebody needs to hear it. That's what this is all about. How are you going to submit to your earthly authority for a check, but you won't submit to your, your, your uh, spiritual authority in the church? So it takes money to make you act right? Yeah, you do them projects when they tell you to do them. And you have them on time for that check. Yes, sir, to the boss. Yes, ma'am, to the female boss. You in that cow town and stepping and fetching for that check. But coming here, well, you know God speaks to me too. Okay, Cora spirit. That's what Cora did, remember? Cora did that. Well, Moses ain't the only one God can speak through. He can speak through me too. So they was like, okay, let's move them over. Come over here, uh, Cora, Dathan. About y'all get about right here, right, right. The the, the ten of meeting. Get, yeah, you need to be standing about right there. Okay, 
<laughs> the Bible said the ground just boom, swallowed them up. not going to have your own agenda. No, we don't have our own agendas. It's always God's agenda. And God uses authority. That's a powerful story about Jethro. That's powerful. When you saw God and still went and submitted. And you know why he had to do that? Because he was going to need Jethro later. He needed Jethro when he got back with the people. He got the people. He ended up trying to lay hands on everybody. And Jethro came and said, hey, Moses, you can't do that, man. You got to get some elders. You got to elect some elders and give them your power. You lay hands on them. You give them your power. They can be you and function like you so that you, he said, you're going to give yourself out. And what did Moses do, Wes? I would listen to you, but I got God's phone number right here. But if I need some advice, I'll dial the heavenly code. No, he submitted to his earthly authority. Made his job easier. Tell people, there's some things you're not going to ever get from God. God didn't tell you that. You didn't hear it from God. Nope. Some things you got to hear from a person. God is going to use who he uses. I just preached a whole sermon. I just, we, we could just sing yes, Lord. Being born again, being born into sin really means that sin will eventually find us and have rule over us. Until we are born again. So when you're born in sin, that means sin is waiting, ready to pounce, ready to get on you. It's going to jump on you and it's going to overtake you until you are born again. Yes, that's what it means, born in the sin. Romans 5 and 12. Wherefore, as by one man's sin entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon how many men? All men. For that how many men have sinned? How much is all? Everybody in here has done something worthy of death. Yes. Amen. That's why you don't feel bad on being here looking like, oh, I'm just the whole wretched. Everybody's been wretched. We call it ratchet now, but it is a derivative of the word wretched. You was wretched first, and then you became ratchet. That's acting on the wretchedness. <laughs> So all have sinned, the Bible says. So we can't point fingers at folks. We can't think somebody, God likes me better than this person and that person. It doesn't work that way. We all have been worthy of death. If it had not been for Jesus, we'd all be paying for it. Amen. But look at somebody say, Jesus paid it all. Bad things happen to us to make us doubt our value, purpose, and God's plan for us. If the enemy can make us doubt then he can cause us to fall. So bad things happen to make us doubt our own value, purpose, and God's plan. James 1 and 6, but let us ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Amen. Some, some folks, their life and the stuff they do is so bad, they make bad a lifestyle. gangster, shooter, robber, whatever it is. You've just given yourself over to it because a bad thing happened to you and you begin to doubt your value. Once you doubt your valuable and don't, doubt your value and don't feel you are valuable, you'll begin to devalue yourself. Yeah. Those are things that make you devalue yourself. There's not a prostitute on earth that would rather, wouldn't rather be doing something else. No, if the enemy can make us doubt, then he can cause us to fall. James 1 and 6, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. 
Doubting also makes us forget the progress we have made. Oh, 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 oh. Makes you forget the pro. Listen. Doubting makes you forget all that God has done through you. Where you are right now is because of God. And all it takes is 10 seconds of doubting and you didn't forget it all. Even though we have grown in God and had many victories, a doubtful moment seems to erase it all in our minds and put us right back in our past. I know I just preached. A doubtful moment. Do you remember what God did? Do you know who you are? Who you've become? How much you've grown and matured? How much you're able to say no to now? That you used to say yes to? Places you just pass by and don't even look anymore? When your car used to just, eh, just turn. <laughs> yeah, that's not you anymore. Stuff on the internet, you see certain real, you just flick right through it. Oh, no, nah, I ain't watching that. When you used to be glued to it. Amen. You've made progress. But if you sit back and doubt, you'll forget all of it and be right back in your past. Mark 9 and 24. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but what? Sometimes you believe, God, I believe, but I need help believing what I believe. I was doing so good and then this happened and God wants to tell you you're still doing good let's pick up where you left off instead of trying to go back to start every time you know you don't want to be around nobody like that like dude you just plummet no there has to be some victories man so I ask the Lord to help your unbelief this is where the enemy begins to compare us to others. Now, this is where this starts. Once that doubt starts, then you compare yourself to others. This one gets you ejected out the church. Now you got to leave the church because you done got into doubting yourself. You watching other people. You're jealous. You don't like them. Pastor showing them favoritism. He must know what I'm doing. He must know. They don't. So let me go. And then you just, you just blew it. Because the enemy is comparing you to other people. They're more spiritual than you. They ain't doing the study. They don't fall. They don't make mistakes like you do. So now you hate them. Yep. I hate Sister Elderberry. Why, why you hate her? Because she just, you know, just so saved. Every time I say hello, oh, God has blessed me. God I'm always blessing her. Well, he'll bless you too. Amen. Amen. This is real live stuff that happens right in church. Folks don't like each other and they can't even tell you why. So it'll start causing you to compare yourself to others and seeing things the wrong way. When you compare yourself to others, you compare yourself to Sister Chantel. I'm just using you as an example because I said something about you today. You compare yourself to her. You was doing that two weeks ago. Now I done celebrated her birthday and your birthday was here and nobody said nothing. Now you feeling away. You hugging everybody with that? How you doing, Sister? Because you don't really like nobody because now the pastor showing favoritism. Yeah, but I'm not showing favoritism. The problem is you let doubt set in. Something don't have nothing to do with me. Now you compare yourself to other people. You feel inadequate in here. So now you seeing everything all wrong. Now you think folks are talking about you. Now as soon as service is over, you go sit in your car. 
You know, that's always the first move that, that car sent with the Bible out. Now, I, <laughs> that's the first move. You in the car with the Bible out. Say, brother, we all fellowship and like, oh, yeah, but I just, some things Pastor said. I just thought I'd just double check. You creepy. Folk creepy in the church. That's just creepy. Get out that car and say hi to somebody. Amen. Now, I'm telling you, that's always the first, man. When I see them sitting in the car, sometimes I go out and I just look who's in the car. Because I know somebody's either offended or somebody's compared. Something is wrong because you ain't fellowshipping. We having fun in here. You done took your football and went home and peeking out the drapes. They still playing. You thought you take your football, we was going to stop playing, but we'll throw a shoe around. It'll be a, we'll throw an Air Force one around and catch touchdowns like we had a Wilson ball. We'll write Wilson on anything. Give me some. Roll up some old barbecue fall. That'll be the football. We'll throw that around. Tell them, Kevin, they, they didn't grow up like we did. Man, we, we, we couldn't afford a ball. No way. So you're not going to take the ball. You know, that's the kid that take with the ball. He don't have the talent. So every now and then, he might, he, he think the ball is his guaranteed pick on the team. Daddy, if you get me this ball, this will guarantee that they'll pick me because they have to pick me. Man, we'll try to play without it. We take, they give me that ball. You hold the box. We'll take the ball and we'll let you air it up in between quarters. Well, I take it. Ain't nobody playing. He take the ball, go in the house, and then peek out the drinks and we out there throwing it around. Whatever we find. Yeah, but that's, your, that's what you're doing. You're sitting out there thinking you're going to make an impact because you just ain't going to fellowship with nobody because your feelings hurt, and then you're going to see the ministry is going to go on without you. So then the next thing you got to do is try to stop it. All of this came over some doubt. All because we allowed doubt to linger too long in our minds and hearts. Jude 22 tells us, have mercy on those who doubt. So there, yes, we're going to doubt. Everybody in here is going to have a doubting moment. That's called human. Amen. That's Jesus in the garden. Is there another way to do this? In his humanness. But then he emptied himself out and said, not my will. Right? And that's what you got to do. Soon as doubt comes, you got to remember, oh, wait a minute, what am I doubting for? This ain't about me, no way. This is about the kingdom of God and the will of God being performed through my life. What am I, why am I worried? Why am I worried about my human feelings when this is about something spiritual? This is something bigger than what I'm feeling. When we seem to have made progress, the winds and waves of this life can make us doubt all over again. But God promised to still be there for us. Amen. We belong to him. Amen. We belong to him. My, 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 my boys that are here, Landon and Jonathan, it doesn't matter what they do. They're going to always belong to me. Amen. And my job isn't to destroy them and hurt them. My job is to help them. I expect at their ages for them to do certain things. Amen. It's not a reflection on me and all of that. No, it's just at that age, you're going to do something dumb. Because when I was at that age, I did something dumb. So it's my job to help them out of dumb them And get them back on track. Because they belong to me. Amen. 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 And then I can't, I can't dare forget me. Amen. 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 I just asked my mama. She'll remind me. <laughs> yeah. So I got to remember. They belong to me. So when the winds or the waves of their life come, make them doubt. I got to remind them what God promised. 
that he's going to be there for them. And God, most of the time, is going to be there for them through me. Amen. Amen. You're supposed to be your child's security blanket. Look, uh-oh. Uh, now, now I'm going in some territory. Quit trying to make your kids tough. Oh, they need to get out there on their own and uh, don't talk to me for a year and watch out because that's what I did. God has brought you to a place where your kids don't have to do that. You didn't enjoy any of that and that didn't help you. You still crazy because of some of that stuff. Save your children from that. Amen. But if I be soft on them, they go, no, if they're watching you and you did something with your life, they're going to do something with theirs. Man, quit trying to take your kids through what you went through. Got them in the back trying to chop cotton. Ain't no cotton, them dandelions. You got to just chopping dandelions. Get out there because that's what we had to do. <laughs> now they got allergies. Coming to hell. <laughs> I can't breathe. It's because they wasn't cotton. <laughs> Chopping daddy lines. Ain't but five of them back there. Hey, Amen. Don't make your children's life hard. Trying to teach them a lesson. You don't have to do that. Especially with the girls. You're supposed to be raising wives in your house. Why are you teaching her to be a boss chick? Taking her money. I know I'm preaching. See, some folk don't like this, but. Isaiah 41 and 10, fear thou not, for I am with thee, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will what? Help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. This is how God sees us, how he wants to treat us. He understands that no matter how strong we are, we are only strong in him. In our humanness, we will have fear and doubt. No matter how strong we believe we are, this creates a perpetual need for him and his presence. Yeah, God don't want things to be good for you all the time. No, he needs you to run to him every now and then. There needs to be a perpetual need for him. Just when you think you somebody and something. Amen. So, yeah. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and do what? Don't you trust your mind. Don't you trust your understanding. I promise you don't know what you're doing without God. Ooh. Every man going to be good. Man. I, I'm, oof. It is. It is. The devil mad too. He's always mad. I hate that saying. Y'all, the devil is upset. People text me that, man, you must really go and preach something because the devil is upset. Like the devil got good days. <laughs> Y'all, this week, the devil is just, he's cool this week. He, he's all right. He ain't even mad this week. <laughs> the devil is always the devil. Evil is in his name. He ain't never happy. To belong to him means that no matter what we are facing, he will be there to rescue us when we need him to. Amen. This doesn't make us weak, but rather it makes us what? Very. Strong. Second Corinthians 12 and 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, and in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong because of him. So listen to this. He says, I take, Paul says, I take pleasure in infirmity, sickness, and illness. 
So when I'm sick and I'm ill, as bad as I feel, I thank God I'm not dead. Reproaches, folks doing me wrong. Necessities, when I don't have something that I need. I take pleasure in that because I know I'm going to get what I need. Because God did it before. Same God's going to do it again. Persecutions, when they coming at me. I take pleasure in it because they wouldn't be coming at me if he wasn't in me. They came at him, they going to come at me. And distress is when I just blow it and I'm in trouble. I'm in distress. 911 SOS, Lord. But I take pleasure in that situation because I know if I wait, he's going to show up. How do I know? Because he's done it before. He's done it before. I said that real country. I tried to rhyme. Because when I am weak, then I am strong. Summary. <laughs> to God, it doesn't matter what happened to you. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter how bad it made you feel or how bad you may have hurt someone else. It doesn't matter what people have said against you. And it doesn't matter what people think about you. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you have made or how heavy your burden is. You still belong to God. Amen. He is not a man that will give up on you. He is not a bad spouse that will desert you. He is not a bad friend that will betray you. He is not a bad father that will abandon you. He is not a bad mother that will scorn you. And he is not a bad relative that will violate you. He is a good God. Now the reason I listed all this stuff is because through these traumas and situations, you'll start seeing God. If you don't deal with what happened or what people or any of these things I just listed, you'll see God through it. And it'll hurt your ability to connect with him and commune with him and to stay right with him. Because you'll start seeing him too human. Yeah, when you're hurt, that's what it's for. For you to pull him down to a human level where you won't put all your trust in him. Now when you don't put all your trust in God, that means you're hiding some of you from one that sees everything. How can you have a relationship with him if you're hiding you? He's none of these things. He'll never be any of these things. He's a good God to bring goodness to your life. But first you got to deal with what happened. You have to. You have to. There is nothing you can do to lose him. Look at somebody. Oh, oh. he preaching that. What they call it? Once saved, always eternal security. No, there's a comma. There is nothing you can do to lose him if you truly want him in your life. So is there eternal security? If you want it to be. You want to be eternally secure, it is. I'm eternally secure. But that's because I want him. Now when I stop wanting him, I'm not. Because the wanting him made me. Does that make sense? Ain't nobody going to be in heaven that didn't want to go. Lord, you done got me up here. I wasn't even trying to go. I want to go where the hellraisers are because I'm a hellraiser. Why am I up here? I'm supposed to be in hell, Lord. It's eternal security. I just, everybody gets to come. Does that make any sense? Nobody's ever looked at it from that standpoint. When you look at it from that standpoint, it makes no sense. Rapture come and he's calling everybody. You, oh, no. No, leave the Lord. No, I ain't trying to go. You're coming. Because I promised you would. No. It don't make any. I mean fighting the. Fighting.
wait in the rapture. <laughs> That's what they teach it out there. I mean, we'll argue you down too that you can't lose salvation. I don't believe you can lose it. I just believe that if you don't finish, you never start it according to the Bible. See, they don't know how God sees time. They got to go back and watch Arab Man 4. I have to explain. You, you, you use it linear time and the way we see time, that's not how God sees time. There is nothing you can do to lose him if you truly want him in your life. If you would only draw near to him, he will always be there. You, be, you will belong to him as long as you believe. You do. Amen. It's all by faith. We're saved by faith. So that means our belief is that we are saved. And we're saved because we believe. And when we don't believe, we're not. And nobody can believe for us. Amen. Thank God I haven't had to do a sinner's funeral. How do you do that? Dude done just shot at everybody in the audience. And you got to do the eulogy. Oh, yeah, well, you know, he, he was good with that weapon. He could hit anything. <laughs> I, I saw him one time. Shoot around the building. I mean, what are you going to preach? Yeah. Man, but you will belong to him as long as you believe you do. Very powerful story, and then I'm going to let y'all go. Matthew 14 and 22, Jesus. Straightway, Jesus constrained the disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. So he sent the multitudes away. Multitudes drained him. I got to go somewhere, recharge, and pray. So when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. Jesus was walking on the sea. Now, he can do whatever he want to do. Now, I, I would love, see, I hope there are some recordings in heaven. Some of this stuff I need to see. Matter of fact, Jesus, just go do it now. See that sea? This had to be pretty amazing and had to be one of the scariest things anybody has ever witnessed. So I don't blame these disciples. They were scared. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled. That's me. I'm troubled. It is a spirit, and they cried out with fear. <laughs> That's me. Amen. But straightway Jesus spoke to them, saying, Now y'all chill out. Be, be a good cheer. It's, it, it's me. Don't be afraid. It's me. I just have abilities I didn't tell y'all about. Things I can do whenever I feel like doing it. And right now, I felt like sea walking. <laughs> He, he can do that too. He can do whatever he want to do. He can walk however he want to walk. You know if that's one of us, I'd be out there just <laughs> testing the water out. Yep, sunk just like Peter. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come unto thee on the water. So if it's really you, let me do it too. You, that looks so cool. <laughs> Let me come out there. He said, come on, Peter. And when Peter jumped out the boat, the Bible said he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Like, oh, yeah. That, yeah, this is, is kind of nice. And then he got to looking around. 
where am I? <laughs> you know how you had that reality? You out there, you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> now wait. <laughs> when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began to sink. And he cried saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou thy doubt? Now this is very important because this illustrates us making progress in the Lord. And then after we've made progress, doubt comes. Now understand something. And God showed me this when I was selecting this scripture and I'd never seen it before. Peter made it all the way to Jesus. For Jesus to be able to reach his arm out, he made it all the way. So he wasn't just on the boat reaching for him. He had made it. He was right there. And doubt came. And that's all of us. No matter how far you've gone, mature you are in the faith. There are going to be times when you start sinking and you could be right there in front of God in his presence and you'll start sinking but he wants you to he wants you to so he can reach down and get you so you'll know that you can't do it without him everyone stands to your feet Yeah. No, God wants us strong. He wants to be able to fight devils, fight demons, fight all of that. He wants all of that. But there are going to be some human times that he's going to allow you to feel a certain way so that you'll need him. So that you'll need him. Story of Elijah, that's, that's, that's one of the best illustrations. When Elijah just, I mean... I mean, he shook everybody down, killed all the false prophets, burned up the wet wood, all of that. I mean, he was going forth and then took off running afterwards and, and wished he was dead. But God wanted him in that moment because that's when God gave him instructions. Right after that, of who to put in place, who was going to kill who, who was going to destroy Baal, and what he was going to eat. God sent that man food. And the Bible said he sent him heavenly food, a cake. He saw a cake baked on something and ate that cake. And the Bible said that gave him the strength for 40 days. I need that cake. <laughs> hey, man, this is some heavenly fondant on it. What did that cake look like, Sister Amy? Angel baker cake. Boy, that's angel food cake. <laughs> 40 days. But that's what I'm saying. Those times, God wants those times to happen. So don't give up and ooh, don't think you're by yourself. It's on purpose. So you can turn to God. So you will need God. So I want to pray for you. Those of you that get to those places and you just panic and feel, you know, Lord. Woe is me. And God is trying to tell you, man, look around you. Everybody is dealing with the devil. Everybody's dealing with their past. Everybody's dealing with what happened, what they said, what they said couldn't happen. Everybody's, man, we're just trying to make it. But I want to pray your strength that you be strong enough in this time. Pray your strength. Amen. 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 Yeah, it gets rough, gets tough, gets hard. Yes. But God will always make a way. He'll always keep his promise. He'll always be there. Yeah, he'll back up sometimes to make you walk forward. He'll let go sometimes to make you tighten your grip. He wants us to be able to stand, but he don't want us standing without him. 
Amen. So everyone bow your heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, that we belong to you. We belong to the God of all gods, king of all kings, the God, the creator of the universe, the creator of everything. We, believe, we belong to the great God of the Old Testament, New Testament, things, testaments we don't even know about. You are God of everything. And you chose us to belong to you. So, Father, we thank you right now. Come on, lift your hands up. We thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for calling us out of sin, calling us out of a life that would destroy us, calling us out of wickedness, calling us out of situations that were harmful to us, calling us out of things that we were doing that we shouldn't have been, calling us out of those things. We thank you, God. But, Lord, sometimes we get weak. Sometimes we doubt sometimes we're fearful sometimes father god we fall sometimes we let go and sometimes we just say why bother but that doubt comes in to make us forget your promise so help us to remember what you've promised to never leave us nor forsake us help us to remember that you're not a man that you can lie. You don't act like a man. You're not going to do what a man would do. You're not going to do what a woman would do. You're not going to do what a human would do. But you're going to always be there. And we're going to always belong to you. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for being that kind of God that loves us that much. And you love us so much that you're going to move heaven out of the way just to get to earth to pick us up. So we thank you, God, for loving us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and hug somebody and say, you belong to God. You belong to God. Tell them, say, don't let the devil make you forget that you belong to God you're not just a regular person you're not there are plenty of regular people we're not regular people we're peculiar people we're different people we have the blood of Jesus flowing in our veins so we are selected people we're God's people hallelujah because we believe hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah.